Okay, so day three notes, what we're going to cover today is what is called a system of three variables. So before we did substitution and elimination with equations where there were two variables, normally x and y. We're now throwing in a third variable, z. A few things that you need to know. When we find a solution, we talked about normally you're graphing two lines. You're looking for the point where the lines intersect. When we have three variables, this is still a line. It's a line in three space, though. So normally when we graph, we graph x, which is horizontal, and y, which is vertical. Now we're adding in z, which is coming out. So we're in three space now. When we find, then, our solution, our solution is going to be the point where all three lines intersect. And it's going to be an ordered triple. And it'll be in the order x, y, z. If we have three variables, what I need us to know then is we will need three equations to solve. So if we want to find the value of x, y, and z, we're going to need three different equations. If we had four variables, we would need four equations. Five variables, we would need five equations, and so on and so forth. So we're going to start with an easy er example, and then we're going to go from there. So example number one, it shows us this three by three system with three variables, x, y, and z, and hence we have three equations. You've never seen this before, but intuitively you might know where to start. Anyone have an idea on this first system where we can start? On the bottom one? Yeah, the bottom equation, if we divide by three, right away we get z equals negative three. Okay, so now we have two options. We're done with the third equation. We solve for z. We need to either go to the first one or the second one. Anyone have a suggestion as to where to go from there? The second one. If we go to the first equation and we plug in z, it's not going to be super helpful because we don't know x or y. But the second equation, if we plug in z, we can find y. So I'm going to go to the second equation. I get 3y subtract 2z equals 9. So this gives us 3y add 6 is equal to 9. So subtracting 6, we get 3y equals 3, so y equals 1. These problems often have a lot of work, and so it's really important that you label your work so that I can follow it. So I did this little 2 and then circled it to show that I was using the second equation. So at this point, we have y, we have z, we need x. Only equation we haven't used yet is the first one. So we're going to have 2x subtract 4 times y, y is 1, plus z, which is negative 3, is equal to negative 3. So we have 2x subtract 4 subtract 3 is equal to negative 3. So 2x subtract 7 is equal to negative 3. If I move the 7 over, I get 2x equals 4, so my x is equal to 2. Now, this should seem intuitive, but I'm going to tell you it anyway. If you find z wrong, like if you said z equals positive 3 instead of negative 3, you mess yourself up for the whole problem. I think that makes sense. Uh, I do want your solution written as an ordered triple, again in the order x, y, z. So x is 2, y is 1, z is negative 3. So what that represents is this system is three lines. If we were to graph all three lines, that's where they would intersect. That's the point. And again, that's a point in three space instead of our normal two. Just like a two by two system, it's possible to get no solution or infinitely many solutions. So I want us to write this down real quick, please. First reminder, how do you know if there is no solution to the system? What's going to happen when you're solving the system? Right, you get a false statement. Like 3 equals 7. 
No solution. What does it mean about our lines? They don't intersect. They don't intersect. Yeah, they don't intersect. Okay, you could also have infinitely many solutions. That's when you have a true statement, like 2 equals 2. Graphically, what does it mean if you have infinitely many solutions? Same line. In this case, three of the same line. Okay. Questions on that before we go into some more complicated examples. Okay. So, before we even fill in this box, let's look, take a look at this last example. Do we see, with this last example, that we can't find a single variable right off the bat? Like the first one we found z right away, we can't do that here. So we're going to have to approach things differently. Still three variables, still three equations. Here's the idea. Step one, you are going to choose two equations. And add. To eliminate a variable. We're going to do that before moving on. So we have three equations. We need to choose two of them and do normal elimination to eliminate a variable. I might choose the first two equations. Why would I do that? Why would the first two be helpful to choose? So you already canceled out. Yeah, we can cancel z out right away. We have a negative z and a positive z. Now, they cancel out when we add. I cannot stress enough. You have to show your work. It's really hard for me to follow work if we just write numbers. So what I would do is I would say, I'm using equations 1 and 2. And then I'm going to copy down those equations. And we're just doing normal elimination. So like Nick said, when we add those z's, we'll cancel out. And we're going to get 4x subtract y is equal to 4. That's step one. So we now have one equation that has two variables. If we want to find x and y, then we need another equation that only has x and y. Step two, we are going to choose two different equations and we are going to eliminate the same variable. So we've chosen to eliminate z. We need to choose different equations now and eliminate z again. We already did 1 and 2. We can do 2 and 3 or 1 and 3. What do you all think? 2 and 3 because, like we said before, we can get rid of z right away. Again, please label your work. So I'm using equations 2 and 3. was to eliminate z. Our z is gone. What else happens just coincidentally here? The y's cancel out too. Yeah. So we end up with 5x equals 10. This is a pretty nice problem. So we get x equals 2. We found x. We need y and z. Ideas from you all. Ideas on how to find y or z at this point. Yeah. Yeah, this equation's not useless. We can still use that one. And we're going to substitute in x equals 2. So maybe I'm going to put a star here. So that hopefully you can follow my work. The star means I'm not going to go to the star. So I end up with 8 subtract y is equal to 4. 
So negative y is equal to negative 4, and y equals 4. Okay, we found x, we found y, we need to find z. We can use any equation that we want to, whichever one that you prefer. Because the middle one is a positive z, I'm going to use the middle equation. Again, label your work, so I'm doing this in green all the way to the right. I have 3x, x is 2, plus y, y is 4, add z is equal to 9. So this gives me 6, add 4, add z is equal to 9. So 10, add z is equal to 9, and z equals negative 1. So our solution as an order of triple is 2, 4, negative 1. We've talked about this before. If I want to check my answer, how could I go about doing that? Plug it in where? All three equations. All three equations. If the first are true and the last one's not, we made a mistake. So it should work in all three. Okay. This is a little bit of a simpler example. In this middle work where the z and the y canceled out, normally that's not going to be the case. Normally what you're going to what's going to happen is you have this equation with x and y and you're going to have another equation with x and y. Normally that's what happens. So let's fill in our steps and then we're going to do one more example. Choose two different equations and eliminate the same variable. Now you will solve the resulting two by two system that has the two equations from above. Lastly, you will substitute into the original system to find the value of the last variable. case we would have ended up with two equations that have x and y. We would solve that system, find x, find y, go back to the original then, and find z. Uh, these steps are not necessarily complicated, but I'm going to warn you that it's very easy to make a small mistake. If you make a small mistake in the beginning, it's going to make things very tough for you moving forward. So we have one more example that we're going to do together and then you all will have time to start practice on your own. Okay. While a few people are finishing writing this, look at the next example. And I just want you to take a look and come up with a plan. Don't write anything down yet, but come up with a plan. What equations do you want to use? What variable are you going to eliminate? Let's jump in. Liam, what do you think? What two equations do you want to start with? Um, the first and second. First and second. And what do you want to eliminate? Just the, the Z. Yeah, this is a nice one again where Z is going to eliminate right off the bat. So Z eliminates, and we get 3x add Y is equal to 7. We need two different equations. We have to eliminate z again. That's the key. Eliminate the same variable. Owen, what equations would you like to use to eliminate z again? Uh, two and three. Two and three. Great. So let's do two and three. 
I cannot stress, you have to eliminate the same variable. So Liam eliminated z, that means that Owen has to eliminate z also. We get 4x subtract 2y is equal to 6. Okay, now this is just a normal system. This is a normal system that we've solved before. So these two equations now form our new system. So we have 3x add y is equal to 7, and we have 4x subtract 2y is equal to 6. We can now use substitution or elimination like we did before. Brett, what do you think? What would you like to do to solve this little system in red? It's up to you. It's your choice. What do you want to do? Elimination. Okay. What do you want to multiply which equation by? Uh, the first equation by two. Okay. So let's take that first equation, multiply it by two. So that will give us 6x add 2y is equal to 14. Second equation stays the same. Guessing, Brett, you wanted to eliminate y? Yeah. So our y eliminates, and we get 10x is equal to 20. So x equals 2. We have x. We still need y and z. Audrey, do you have any ideas where to go from here now that we have x? What I'm asking is, is it going to be one of these three equations, the original, one of the red equations, somewhere else? Yeah, yeah, we're going to go back to one of the red ones. Uh, Audrey, do you have a preference? Great, let's use the first one. The first one, we're going to get 3 times x, add y is equal to 7. So we get 6, add y is equal to 7. So our y is 1. We have x, we have y, we need z. Kenny, ideas to find z? Uh, plug it back into the second equation. Um, can you be the second equation in the original uh, yeah. system? Yeah. yeah, any of the equations in the original system will work. Kenny wants to use the second one. So we get 2 times x. Subtract y, add z is equal to 6. So 4 subtract 1, add z is equal to 6. So we get a z to be 3. So final answer, written as an ordered triple, is 2, 1, 3. And again, this is the point for all three of those lines that are 6. I cannot stress enough. It's important to show your work and to label it. I have one more thing I want us to do, but before we do that, do you all have any questions for me with this process? Okay, we're not going to do this example. I just want to talk about it real quick. So if you could write this down, please. First equation is going to be x minus 2y plus z is equal to 7. And then we're going to have 2x plus y subtract 3z is equal to 10. And then we're going to have 3x plus 3y add 2z is equal to negative 4. This one is a little bit trickier than the ones that we've looked at before. What I want to talk about is what our plan would be. So if you were going to start with this system, what two equations would you start with? And what variable would you eliminate? In this case, I don't think there's a very obvious place to start. Can anyone tell me what two equations you chose and what you would want to eliminate? The first and second. Okay, first and second, and what did you choose to eliminate? Y. 
y. Okay, how'd you do that? Uh, multiply the second one by 2. Okay, so we would multiply the second equation by 2, giving us 4x, add 2y, subtract 6z, equals 20. So we would get 5x, subtract 5z, is equal to 27. Okay, so we use 1 and 2. Can somebody give a suggestion as to where to go from here, knowing that Adam chose equations 1 and 2 and eliminated y? Okay, two and three. Yeah. Okay, that is super key. She chose different equations, but eliminated the same variable. So she multiplied the middle equation by negative three. We're not going to keep going with that, but I want to let you know that sometimes you're going to have to multiply by something. Questions for me?